Hello YouTube and welcome back to Allie's Wonderland Creations. I am Alice Serafin and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States. Guess what guys? It's a paper pumpkin! Yay! Yay! My little hands are going like this. I'm so excited. Okay. So March 2024's Paper Pumpkin Alternative video number one. This kit is called Memorable Meadow. It kind of goes with the Garden Meadow. Um, online exclusive and the DSP is very much like that and oh my goodness of course they printed us the inside of the envelopes are printed the card bases are double-sided yes the only thing I'm like mm, is these wooden pieces not my fave thing okay I don't even know I might do a, a sampler with with them. Um, I, I'm struggling with those, so I haven't even taken them out of the package they came in, in the box. I'm going to take a sip of tea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me show you what I'm talking about. These bits here, they're quite large. I don't have a, my rulers way up there. I don't want to pull it out. So, um, some people may really like this. I just, against this, it, it's to me, it sticks out and it's like, okay, do I sponge it? I'm going to have to do something to use at least one of them. I can see using them in other projects, just not on the card. So that's staying in the box. Um, and let me get show you a look at the kit. Now, videos one through five, I'm going to show you everything that came in the kit. And then after that, I'm not showing you no more. But a visual it, what you and how you can do that, what and how and everything in it. You get this great QR code. I don't like that, not very much. This is interesting. This is using the um, garden meadow die, that large cutout. They turned it upside down because it looks like a door. They turned it upside down and these are from the Love of Spring Dyes, which is supposed to coordinate with this kit. However, let me show you the new Thanks and Beyond Dyes, which you can only get these little dyes if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber. So that is something you need to think of. But these are meant to go with April, May, and June. And look at this. They got a butterfly. Yes, and in this little bit here, and I love the thanks, very useful. In fact, I'm looking at this right now and I'm liking, oh, that thanks would go really great on my card, but it's, I'm, I'm going to stick with the what's in my head already. So I plan on be using these with March's kit because I can, I should get shirts made up that say because I can. Yes, yes, yes. So just to, to let you know, those are available. So, um, and then of course you get a visual of everything in the kit. And if this looks like a great big card, it's because that's the front and back. Front and back. And the front and the back of those, I believe, are the same. So this, this one, you get two stamp sets. Yay! Yes, 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 yes. And um, it gives you a visual of everything in the kit. The coordinating colors. Let's go over those. Balmy blue. Basic Black, Berry Burst, Daffodil Delight, Early Espresso, Fresh Freesia, Garden Green, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple Green, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy, Old Olive, Petal Pink, Pretty Peacock, Very Vanilla. Yeah, they got a lot of colors that can coordinate with this kit. So you have a lot of choices from your stash to play with. So there's that. Now into <laughs> my little container thing. So you got Dimensionals. Um, glue dots and these little uh, adhesive back sequins which are interesting might use a few of those maybe maybe not we'll see I'm gonna leave those out a spot of garden green and you got these cutouts which I've already cut out because that's how I, I roll right so this is a really nice thick vellum and you can see my finger hopefully through that so you got these ones and you have those three you have these um, sentiment strips with some gold foil on them 
then hold on so this is what I punched the others out of I'm not sure if I'm going to use those now looky here you got four of those shapes and four of these sentiment st strips um keep this if you follow me and you want to make a trash bit card that's a trash bit this one I don't think I'll be using but I'm keeping it for the moment I've already got this one planned this is going to be, this is one of those envelopes I got at a thrift store. I can already see this being on one side and having stamping here. So this is definitely a keeper. This is the envelope I want to show you. Look at all that great goodness. And the white here can be used. It can be used on the inside of the card to stamp. I mean, it's usable. And then our card bases. So... We have this one, front and back. This is the one we're going to be using today. This is lovely, lovely, lovely. And I'm going to show you. I already have hmm, a large card base, which this is seven. So it must be. I think this is a five by seven card. So it is ten. Yes, this is a five by seven card. So it is seven by ten scored at five. I'm going to sneeze. I just know it. It's it's right there, you know, but it's not there yet. Let me tickle my nose there a bit. Touching my nose like this on the top. Don't sneeze. Don't sneeze. Look at how pretty this is going to be. Oh, I've got two. No, I don't. I was like, I got two. So I see this on an entire card front. I just think that's beautiful. So that's what I plan on doing with that one. I have ideas already. I already have one pulled out. And this one, they have this one. Hot dog style. And this would be, oh, this would be lovely too on a slimline card, a large one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just, I, I just love looking at. So this is four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. So that is a look at the paper stuff that came in the kit. I have my large garden green ink pad. I have my gorgeous grape ink pad. I'm going to stick the spot in there and then they don't give you this little envelope, but they gave us one of these sleeves again. So I'm hoping this is staying with stamping up. They gave us this piece of paper on the folded line. You can fold it in half and this is a great Thing to store your ink pads in. Now you can get clear uh, cases. You get like five of them for so much. I don't remember what the price is, but that our stamp cases come in. I'm going to need to turn the heater on, guys. I don't want to freeze. Let's turn it on low there. And this stamp set, let's see, paper. I don't know if that's any better. But you have this outline image. These are going to stamp on the inside. These can also stamp on the inside. Really great. So this would be step one, step two, step three. The leaves will stamp inside the outline. I believe, I'm wondering what that is, probably here somewhere. And this one for the center. Great, great, great. Love this, love this. Just we're not using that today. <laughs> not today. This alone will make a great card front if you just use the stamp set in itself. So I'm going to pop those on it. So our sentiments are, you've been on my mind, have a beautiful birthday, heartfelt thanks, this flower, and it's the little things that matter. We are using the heart, the heartfelt thanks, the flower, it's the little things that matter. And then on the other one, Look, they give you a little splatter spot, so we're going to use it. And let's put that back in there. Close that up. And what do we have? Notebook, please. So, really simple. We have a white card base. Five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter. We have layer number one is, oops. I kind of messed that up, didn't I? Where is my pen? Oops, it's in the drawer. See, I cleaned things up. It's going to take me a while. And Pigma pen, not what I want. I want the blue ink pen. 
All right, so layer number one, mm -hmm. that's layer number two. And this needs to be three and three quarters by five. So let's do layer number one is four by five in a quarter. And this is gorgeous grape. Here it is. Ta -da! It's done. So we're going to be cutting this card base this half down not the we're doing the back half we're going to cut this off and cut it down together i'm using this trash bit now you have a choice to make when deciding to use this trash bit you can use the right or the left i am choosing the left just because of my placement let me take a look again oh i could do See, these two are a different size than this one. These are all equal sizes, so I want this side. So I'm going to be using these with the smaller lines here. We're going to cut that apart so you can see how I do it. It just means that these bits I can use somewhere else. I'm going to be using this sentiment piece, and I'm going to be using these three little flowers. If you don't have little flowers, I showed you I got these for a buck at a thrift store. I'm going to use them. Um, the Petal Park Punch, um, the Builder Punch there, these, you could make three flowers very easily with the Petal Park Bundle. I don't know why that's not staying in the catalog, the stamp set. I don't because that, there isn't anything else like it. The punch is, but the stamps aren't from what I gather. I could be wrong. So let's get started, shall we? Yes. And I'm going to pull my sleeves up. I was out with my daughter, so I have stuff. We're going to cut things first. Reach in under the desktop for the guillotine. So first things first is we're going to cut this trash bit. And I want to just cut off that edge. And I got to get it right to the edge of my guillotine whatever you use to cut okay I am keeping this because I can cut these apart and use these bits behind things now we have our piece now we're gonna cut our card base in half so I'm gonna give it just a little fold like that and move the blocks open it up all the way and I'm gonna cut it apart now the next step is is I'm gonna move it over a little bit more to four and a quarter and I'm gonna cut out the part that was creased this little bit is not gonna be kept now it's nice and flat so I want to scooch it over to three and three quarters because I want the trees to stay in and it needs to be by five so there's five so I have two choices for these bits I can choose to put a strip of this on my um, envelope mailer which I probably will do and this I can put at the bottom on the inside of my card so there's no waste this is going back in our supplies and we can get started. Oops, I have, oh, I'm like, I don't have anything mounted. I do have things mounted. Good for me. Yes. Uh -huh. So let's stamp our sentiment. And I'm debating heartfelt thanks. I'm going to do, it's the little things that matter. I love this. But you know what? Hello would be beautiful on this card. You can't have enough hellos, right? You just can't. Oh, you just can't have enough hellos anywhere. So we have to do this mushy smushy. And that's stamping. And then smush, smush, smush. And give it a little twist. Because a lot of the times with polymer stamp set, there's a bit of like a, a film on them. And you just get a better stamping if you just ink it up in wipe that excess off so here we go now it's ready it's primed as you could say 
I want, no, this is going to be good. I might need to re-ink Gorgeous Grape because I've used it quite a bit. It's the little things that matter. I think this is a beautiful little thing. Really, really do like it a lot. So that's gorgeous. Now, where's my mailer? I want to go ahead and do all my stamping. So we're going to have to, if you want to call it, prime all of these by doing the smushy smushy. I like calling it the smushy smushy thing first, right? So I'm just going to get it out of the way and do the smushy smushy on all of them. All right. So on this one now, I'm going to clean from here to here off because I'm going to stamp that part in gorgeous green. Do not put it past me just to cut the stamp. And I think I'm going to clean it off and I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to show you. I'm just going to do it. It will make me so much happier. <laughs> it really will. Do not cringe, please. Look away. Look away if you think it's going to bother you. Um, because it's not going to bother me at all. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this. Because I know I will ink this up constantly in purple or another color where this I'm only going to ink it up in green so all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here straight cut and cut here now what cut that all the way apart I'm not doing any curve cutting I'm just going straight cutting so now I have two bits and you can see it has a little pointed bit there I'm going to cut that off as well if you do straight cuts, it should work relatively easy. If you are uncomfortable with this, then don't do it. But, um, you know, once upon a long time ago, you had to cut the red rubber stamps apart. And I used to be so fearful of it. And I'm not anymore. So now these are going to go on smaller blocks. And, ta-da! They're just going to be easier for me to, to work with in the long run. We are going to do Garden Green. Now, just the way this flower is detailed, I'm going to go ahead and stamp it here. And then I'm going to make like some grass. there. Now I'm going to do the purple, the gorgeous great purple, and I'm going to stamp my flower. And now I can get the head of this flower to go any direction and not worry about the stem by doing just that simple little bit. Here we're going to bring in, we're going to stamp off because I just want like some little bits. We need another stamping because that didn't quite grab it. And I'm going to show you something else you can do. Grab a blender pen. Now I moved my blender pens. One of these is the one I was using. I don't know which one. So I am going to pick up, you see this little bit of dark Thing there. I'm going to pick that up off the side. Wipe it off because I want it light. And I'm going to color in my leaf. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. If you don't have a blender pen, guys, I have, these are, they're from like, they're 20 years old. Yeah, because I probably bought them 2004, 2006, and I've got, like, let me show you, because I just saw them the other day. I've got two more. Some of them were used. These two are brand new. This one's barely been used. These down here, all these tips I'm used, and I have three. I did finally throw my really old, old one away, but I have three up here in this drawer that are for using right now. So, very handy. Now what we can do without 
adding ink. We're going to blend in the ink that we already stamped. We're going to color in our flower. Let me put it on here so you can see. Now, if you want it more dark, I'm just picking up ink that is around the outside. I want to tap when I do that. I want to tap off the darker bits. Look at that, now it's really deep. Let me pick up some more. Trying to do them all the same stroke like. Pick up some more. I'm gonna touch it right to the, get that kind of dark. Do that whole thing dark there. All right, so now we have a gorgeous little flower on our label mailer, is what I tend to call it. And I'm going to leave that one out for the rest of the kit because I know I will be going back to it. And we are going to do some stamping around the edge. In gorgeous grape. I'm just going to come down the side turn and I'm going to rotate it this way Keep going. And around the top. Now we are going to have to do the inside as well because we want to we want to make it really pretty, right? So we have, let's see. Oh, you know what? Hmm. I'm not going to use it because I put the flower there. We can put this on the inside. So, oh, that's going to look lovely when you open it up. But I do want to do a little bit of the splatter detail. Here we go. So I want to do, I don't want it full strength. I want it stamped off. And I'm just turning it. Just so you have a little bit of a visual interest. So this is going to go here and we're going to have just those little dots there. We're going to stamp the inside with heartfelt thanks and we'll probably do a flower on here as well. I wonder if the reason why it's not ringing is because I need the ink refill. That could be, but I thought I had it. I'll have to double check. Heartfelt thanks. And let's do, hmm, I wonder if I stamped it there. No. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Garden green. This is going to go there. So I want my flower right there. And gorgeous grape. Bring in the blender pen and I'm going to blend in. I'm not going to go all the way. I'm just going around the edges. I'm going to hold it up in a second, just shadowing it kind of. Oh, there's a lot of gorgeous grape on there. You do want to wipe it all off. All right, so this side must be the green. Now I'm going to do the same thing on there. So let me hold it up so you can see. I just did a little shadowing 
by using the blender pen, I went around the edges. And there's still a little white in there. So that's all I did there. And we're going to move this because I think we're done with all of the stamping. Oh, the glue. Where is my glue? Ender things. Please be the one I was working with. So we need to add our strip. We can move that aside. And we know it's a half an inch. Just going to do a squiggly line. For me, it, it, it really does work well putting glue where you want it if you use a grid. And then I'm going to use the tabletop making sure it's all the way to the edge. So that's how beautiful it is on the inside. We have the gorgeous grape layer. Next, I'm thinking I might take a blender pen and go around the outside or a sponge dauber. Let's do a sponge dauber. Gorgeous grape. I know I have one. Why does it look like there isn't one in here? And I know I have one. Well, it might help if I look in the regal department, huh? Gorgeous grape. Interesting. This, that says Highland Heather. Interesting. I really thought I had one, but we'll have this one. We have one now, don't we? We're going to sponge. Oh, yes. This is going to look great with the, with the card base. So when I'm sponging, I'm taking two fingers on the back and a thumb to the front. And going across the edge. My ink pad is really dry. I know I kept saying before that I needed to re-ink it last time I used it, but I really need to re-ink it. Now I'm afraid to re-ink it because I might get too much on it. So just moving my placement. There was a time, now I'm using all of them because of the way I'm holding it. There was a time when I did this to cards, to envelopes, to the inside, you name it, I sponged the edges of it. I want to also do, now this is going to be a little trickier, so I'm going to pick up my scratch paper just so it has more support, and now it's going to make it much easier. I don't want it as dark. I'm going to turn it this way. I just want to do the two ends so we're just going to do the two edges because I don't want it there just a little hint and you know I'm going to do the inside so tap it off I don't want it dark but I'm going to go along the edge there. Okay. I'm going to leave Gorgeous Grape out. Now we are going to glue our, the Gorgeous Grape onto its counterpart. Haven't heard any music coming from my hubby's car. Maybe he's finally got his stereo. And it's the kind that has a backup camera, those new Fandangle things. And I'm like, oh no, he got the same one my daughter has. And it doesn't like to have two different people's phones hooked up to them. So, I'm like, great. My daughter's like, mom. Make sure you, you turn your Bluetooth off when you get in my car because it'll constantly want to kick over to mine. I don't know why. So our mailing label.
These are going to be gorgeous cards to mail out. So bright. Ooh, let's go ahead and do the card base. Why not? We have all that other stuff sponged. Let's go around. I'm going to do darker at the bottom because it's got all that color on it. So I'm going full strength here because otherwise you wouldn't even know. I don't even know if you can tell. Yeah, I can tell, but it's really... Trying to get my fingers over there. lot. Ooh. Subtle, subtle, subtle little details. That is beautiful. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to start doing more and more cards flat. Um, personal preference, especially with the mail. And I enjoy mailing my cards, so... I'm going to give them some dimension, but like that, I'm not putting on dimensionals. This little bit now I'm going to use. Isn't that cool? I mean, this would have been a piece you throw away, but it looks really great. So I'm going to use tear tape and I do have to use the eighth of an inch. This is vellum. There is, I don't want to open it up. In the catalog, you have this fine tip glue pen. The only problem is it's, you hear that? It's really liquidy. Um, it can come out really quickly, and when you go to push it down, it it can ooze out. Um, but I'm telling you, this does work really well on vellum. I just don't, and I have a hard time getting the, the top on it. So I, I do have, in fact, I used an entire bottle. Um, I do like it, but I like it for certain things. And I can show you one of, I'll have to do a card. So I'm going to have to take a note. So yes, I'm going to take the time and I am going to use tear tape scissors on my edges here of the vellum. And I'm taking my time because I only have the one piece. I don't want to ruin it. So I'm going to go on the top. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the center if I even want to go there. But I might just go around all four sides. And this is eighth of an inch. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't be able to do this. Eh, it's down. Once it's down, it's staying down. You all can thank Miss Bella. She sent me some more tear tape. Has to be from Paper Pumpkin, hun, I think. Um, thank you. I was all out, actually. And I just want to add, I can't help it. Let's see if I can cut this in half, which is going to be really like, let's see. I am going to try to cut this little strip there, turn it to the other side. And I'm just going to then place that in the center here. Not all the way on it, just in the center. All right. Need a bone folder. She also sent me a new bone folder, guys. Yes. Which is, is so kind of her because I want my husband to drill a hole in it and I want to do a charm. <laughs> I've seen those done and I've got lots of things. I've got little charms from stamping up little teacups. 
and I thought that would be really cute to go on there. Pokey tool time. Thinking fingers of where is the pokey tool? It should be in this thing here, and it's not. When I clean, I do silly things. <coughs> oh my goodness, come on. It was like literally, let's close this up while I move things to look for pokey tool. No way. No pokey tool. That is insane. I want my pokey tool. I want my pretty pokey tool. We'll have to use the take your pick tool because I don't know where my pokey tool is. But I'm this one just doesn't it's it's a little bulkier it is bulkier and the other one is fit so well but I don't know where it went to I have a spare I'm still looking because I can't imagine where it went to so we're gonna yeah I want my pokey tool I wonder where it went to. It doesn't get under the tear tape the way the other one does. Okay. Mm -mm. Not going to happen. I mean, that tool is great for other uses, just not what I want. So I'm going to grab my spare. It looks just like it. But I know this is the spare because it still has the tip on it. It just, it's thinner and it works better. Stampin' Up! I love your products. That one has a purpose, just not this purpose. So there's our little accent. And we're hopefully going to get it, you know, in the center of the card. It's just a focal point is all. Really still like freaking out over my pokey toe being missing. So we have this that we stamped. It's the little things that matter. And I'm thinking now we need to add a little bit of, oh no, because we're going this side and this side. So no. Unless I change the position of my flowers. So here are those three little flowers, and like I said, if you don't have these three, feel free to use... See, I like the placement here. I have... I could go there, because there's a little speck of ink there that I'd like to cover up. That still looks good, so we'll do it that way. This could go on dimensionals. It would look great on dimensionals, but it's going to look great, just as great flat. And I'm going to choose flat. The reason being, you guessed it, because I can. Now this is going to go in the center of this line here. And we need glue dots. I don't think I need any more of this. Let's see. This one is getting the two. This is getting the one. This is getting two. Hopefully that's good enough. We're going to put the lighter lavender one there and the darker one right there. Now we have 
spots and we need a little something of course we do in them so let's go ahead and use do i want the big one looks a little i don't know on that one it looks great this one it just looks too big so maybe we do one large right there these always make me think they need something on the inside it's just Kind of my thinking and let's do a little one and a little one right there so that is I usually don't even put a tip on it but in case I find my good one my other one I mean they're they're both good ones I just would like the other one so this is card number one wink of Stella wrong nope that's the right end that's interesting okay that must be the really old one let's do this one so we're gonna come in here and do the trees all this pretty stuff at the bottom that's what we're gonna wink a Stella Oh, you know what? Let's do all this blue. Just the blue. Because I don't want to do everything, but I just want to have a little bit of sparklies on there. So there you have it. My first paper pumpkin alternative. Very simple. Easy to recreate. Um, if you already use this piece, um, you could do... You could do a circle in the center and maybe back it with a little bit of another color like um, Highland Heather or um, Fresh Freesia Bubble Bath something and have a big white circle. You could do gold foil strip, a little strip behind here and do a circle on top of that and bring out the same elements. So heartfelt thanks and that is sure true for all of you out there who watch my videos, who are, are there in the crafting community. Thank you so very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is just a start. Work on getting my mojo back since I was sick there. And I invite you to come back and visit me again in my wonderland. Bye-bye for now.